absolutely, man. Yeah, that's spot on. I mean, that's the whole thing from the marketing side of this or the business side of it. If I had to recover right about the business side, but like there's so much more of the ethical components. I feel like the accessible home grow so everyone has fair access to cannabis and freeing the nonviolent cannabis offenders and including in the industry. They have to be com central components to it. Otherwise, why the hell are we doing this? Might as well just deep decriminalize or deschedule it and let people do whatever they want at that point and not even have a marketplace if you're not doing the inclusion. And I think it's very intelligent of these companies to not stigmatize the people that have a record for it because they clearly already know what they're doing. They've been around the product their entire lives. Why would you ignore that kind of experience? When something is suddenly allowed, that doesn't mean it suddenly starts to exist. It existed before. And to ignore history is to repeat it. It didn't work with prohibition and it's not going to work this time. Damn sure. Damn right, man. You know, that's what we're trying to advocate to the states. Uh, touch and go. We'll, we'll say it seems like New York and New Jersey have uh, more of a desire to do it. Uh, still an uphill battle, but they seem to be doing it better than some states. Could be better, could be worse, but it needs to be done right. So that's kind of the conundrum. I feel like watching it unfold on a day to day basis in my role. Well, but, you know, it's position. a oh, sorry, you're position. You've been you're in a position, fortunately for you and everybody else in the community to advocate and push for these things on a day to day basis. I tend to pay more attention to it on the grander scale because I'm not inundated in it day to day. But I know that all wars are fought of many battles, and I feel like this is one that we're all destined to win. Dude, I hope you're right, man. I love that perspective. And, you know, and I like that too, because I've, you know, I like talking to the people that are in the industry because they do have that different perspective, like you just said. You know, if you could just kind of take us, you know, kind of provide an insight maybe for industry folks like me, whether it's in the media or just folks that are running businesses, you know, what is something that you think the cannabis industry might be missing or even just the, you know, the psychedelic and cannabis industry might be missing, you know, from what they're trying to develop in this nascent market and you know what the community and you know everyday consumers like yourself or everyday individuals like yourself might want to know or learn or might be misconceiving about this plan um i think just like a brochure of information like i have a lot of people that when the dispensaries are open my parents smoke my cousins smoke like i said i've been around it my entire life so they would come to my house the first time ever and they're like what do i do what do i get they don't know what rolling papers even are. They don't know you need water in a bomb. They just don't know. They have zero idea how they're going to feel. So it's not they even plant nothing. compounds. It's just the whole structure to it. Yeah, like they know that you can smoke it. <laughs> That's and they know it. that you'll get high, but they don't even know what high is. They only know whatever they uh, like. They associate it with Shaggy from Scooby Doo all the time. I'm going to get really dreary and be super hungry. And that's but they don't know any effect or yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think just a little brochure, even just like a postcard of information, like, oh hey, if you smoke it, you're going to get this, and you're going to get a bigger effect if you do this, this, or this. Because they didn't know there was a difference between a blunt, a joint, a bowl, and a bomb. They didn't yeah. know it would affect you differently. Yeah, and we're, and we're still struggling. People still don't know the difference between indica and sativa and what they think is the difference between indica and sativa isn't even correct. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's interesting you say it like that. And it's kind of unfortunate because that is the problem we always have that just seems to be what they call the education gap. And, you know, it's just, like you said, there's so many fundamental things as well as top level, more important, granular sort of things they need to know too. And it's just, it seems like it's going to be a really uphill battle. And I, I hope I that it think, can be beaten. I don't, I, it's going to be a tough one though. I think for a lot, a lot of dispensaries, they need to, on an individual level, I'm a big believer in small business, even if it's part of a chain. I believe in the power and trusting your managers. Hmm. So let's say that's a chain that came out of Colorado, right? They need to trust their store managers to find a local smoke shop, somebody that deals in the paraphernalia to be able to recommend people, hey, go here. I trust this guy. He knows what he's talking about. That way you have the hardware and the product covered. That way people that are just looking, I just want to unwind after work. You can get the product, but if all you're looking to do is unwind, you don't need a steamroller. Right. Yeah, like it, that's it's different needs. Something, different. Yeah, you need different. something you would need. Right, yeah. Exactly. You got to educate exactly. people on what they actually need, what they actually want. There's different results based and, you know, what one thing isn't going to work for another. I love that idea about the collaborative uh, spirit of it. 
it, and I think that kind of runs afoul with so much of what's going on in the business right now is, you know, these major players are, you know, trying to take over. And also even the smaller ones, there's just such a level of competition that it's almost like most of them would rather choke out an industry and acquire the company rather than collaborate in some sort of like aspect of like what you just said, where it could actually benefit all sides, including the community. I believe very strongly in education. The one thing about dispensaries near me, I would immediately implement if it was my business, is maybe just an index card describing the whatever product that it is purchasing, whatever strain, to send with them. You know, I wonder if that's even allowed. I because I know New Jersey has really strict marketing rules. I wonder if that's considered marketing material. It, pro it should fall under brochures, but no in New Jersey and its laws. I could totally see them saying that's a marketing material too. I want to look into that because that is, I mean, it's a good idea to send home the information. I wonder if New Jersey law would allow it or if they would have something convoluted that says that's a marketing flyer or something. Um, I'm sure if you didn't put like company letterhead on it and you just, let's say it's again, like a flyer I might be or something. Wrong. No, but, but like, I believe it's Indica is more of a relaxed strain. Uh, they're more about the plant structure than anything, but that the commonly known as indica is the sedative, sativa is the uplift. Okay. Not, enti not so, entirely correct, but yeah, that's what people know. Yeah, who, well, whoever is actually dealing with this and ordering it would know more about the individual strains. Sure. So if you sell that strain, just, oh, what can you expect from this? Because they'll tell you when you're there. But it's just, you, you can only fit so much information on a vial that big. Right. You're going to so get three, the three same emotions. Information, the same information that you would get from the person behind the counter, I think should be sent home with the product. And even if you're not advertising it, so you don't need the company letterhead, you don't need a price point on there, just it does, you, you can expect X, Y, and Z when you consume this product. I think I might have just been able to pitch you as a marketing head for a couple of companies in uh, New Jersey dispensaries, dude, because that's a great idea. Yeah, I also don't like need you to i don't want to put you into like just talking about weed and stuff i know we got just a few minutes here and i want to bring it back man like you know what are you focused on you know with everything that's been going on in the world i know you're dropping some good bits of information since you um you know since you started your accounts and stuff what are you working on these days where are you trying to do anything I'm, different or what's the momentum so for i'm you? trying to convince a couple of my good buddies to i've reached out to four or five different people in my personal life that i've always bounced ideas off of people i've had smoke sessions with and it's just really blown my mind even going back to high school I was in a special program that ran more like college mm -hmm. out of um, a technical school. And the one day we were done our work, so we just sat around a table talking about whether or not black holes could create wormholes to shorten the distance in space and time. Okay. Which is not something you would expect out of a bunch of high schoolers sitting around doodling on a piece of paper. Like, we were about to get in trouble, and then the physics teacher walked over and was like, wait, what? So, so keep, I'm trying going. To keep going. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to convince them to start a podcast with me. Because the little bit of knowledge that I have been speaking of is just general advice to me, but I don't think it really means much without a way or an example of how you can apply it. So the Hanlon's razor and Sonder theories were applied in that video in real time. And I think that's what resonated so much more is that you can visibly see people relax and think this through. And I think it's really important to have another person to bounce those ideas off of who's also kind of an out there thinker that might bring a point of view that even I wouldn't have. And, and um, what would you – oh, sorry. Go on. I'm trying to put together a little bit of a journal that I want to throw on Amazon, which is like, all right, here's my weekly goal. Here's what I'm going to do to reach it. Here's my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it just gives you two or three lines on each because the idea isn't that you need to hit that goal. It's just, this is what I want to work towards. Right. If it's a new car that you can break down that you researched cars that day, or you signed up for a newsletter. So I'm trying to put that together, but I've run through a couple of designs that I just haven't been happy with. Um, I'm also working on a cosplay for Anime NYC. Me and my girlfriend are going this year. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, oh, do you, anything you're uh, ready to announce, or is that uh, TBD? We're going as, uh, I'm going to be Belle Crannell, and she's going to be Hestia from Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Okay, I don't know what that is, but that sounds awesome, man. <laughs> it started off as a big fan service anime, which, if you've seen any fan service anime, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Skinny I don't. Waist, exactly what everybody <laughs> expects out of stereotypical anime women. Like, it, it was made for a very specific audience. But it did so well with the story and all the supporting characters that it's expanded to four seasons now. 
Oh, nice. Good shit, man. That's awesome. I, I got to dive in. I've always felt like I would really appreciate anime, and I just never have. And especially with all it's the ju- weed I smoke, I was like, why don't I sit back and watch some of this? It's just storytelling. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. No, I, I, heard- I, I've, I've, heard, I've heard great things. I've just, for some reason, have never gravitated to it. But, like, it, yeah, that, the few times I have, it's always seemed like some great watches. Um, My biggest one that I recommend, because everybody likes good fight scenes and likes seeing an overpowered character, is uh, that time I was reincarnated as a slime is probably my favorite anime that's come out in the last five years. You got me on the title. Yeah, it's... It was one of the ones that started this big... Uh, the genre is called Isekai, where you're died or transported to another world. And it's really one of the ones that like exploded out of it. Um, Demon Slayer is the new big one on the block. And that's been doing phenomenal um i have a co-worker had a co-worker at the last company i worked at he's 42 with three daughters two just turned 16 and his other one's 12 she wanted to start watching anime with him so he was like ah fine whatever i'll sit down and watch it and it had this 43 year old man shedding actual tears oh nice so it's it's just a whole the whole layer of I mean it's like you said it's a whole world of storytelling and just you know and I, happens to be honestly, animated. I think you can do so much more with anime than you can with most TV shows. Yeah, because it's lower budget and you can actually just do a whole lot more. Like the amount of effort. Tons of creative it takes to liberty. Up, not even just that the effects the amount of effort it takes to fake a fireball that looks good in real life is astronomical. Right. You go to any middle school in the country. And go to the art room and say, hey, I need a good-looking fireball. You'll get six by the end of the day. It's <laughs> a good point. Yeah, I, I, I mean, there's. I wonder, well, I guess now with the writer strike, I don't know what that's going to do with all the, the creations in the world. But um, I wonder if we're going to see more of it in the future. Because, I mean, yeah, those production budgets and, you know, so much so other crap to it. We're going to see so much more anime in the future that I think it's going to eclipse traditional TV. Uh, there was a... The Demon Slayer movie, the train, Mugen Train, that came out about two years ago. Mm-hmm. If you had to guess an anime movie that's all limited theatrical release in the United States, what would you say its worldwide box office was? If you had to take a shot in the dark. I mean, because I, I know a little bit about the box office with the Asian markets. I'm going to assume at least a couple hundred million, but that's all coming 1. from Asian. Four era. billion. All right. Nice. Nice. A little bit of an audience. Was, a little bit of a fan It was base. the highest grossing box office of the year. It beat everything. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. $1.4 billion box office by the time its run was done. Damn. That was two years ago? Yep. All right. Well, you hear that, Meg2 fans? We got a huge bar to clear. Let's go do it. (laughs) No, just kidding. But yeah, I am am excited for a big giant shark movie. That's the genre I usually watch. But I'm always looking to expand my genres. And um, my uh, my girlfriend's uh, twin sister is a pretty big anime fan, so she's been suggesting ones too. So I will. Uh, I do need to dive into this. So I appreciate you uh, sending some recs, dude. Well, you're uh, in good luck because they have a gigantic anime convention in New York every year at the Javits Center. There we go. When is that actually? Uh, November eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth. I think I'm gonna have to try to get some uh, tickets to a press pass. I think this will be something fun the, to cover. The Three-day passes, VIP passes, and Saturday tickets are already sold out. All right. Going to have to go for a press pass and <laughs> see if I can get lucky on that one. They have dude, a whole – for anybody that's interested, they do have a affiliated resale market based on fair value. They run actual models. It's not like you'd expect from Ticketmaster where it's scalpers. It's actual resales, people that can't attend. Um, and if you're traveling from abroad, they also have partnered hotels. It's Damn, all on their okay. website. Oh, nice. I, I feel like we did a nice branded spot for these guys. And uh, yeah, that's awesome. Go check them out. I'll put a little mention down here for them, actually. No, but that actually sounds really cool. Um, Robert, man, I appreciate it. I know you just did 10 hour days. I don't like tying people up, although I would love to invite you back and wax on or at the very least talk about wrestling because we didn't scratch that surface at all. And I got some shows about that one day I'd love to do. But I want to let you go and be respectful of your time here. One thing i uh, love to ask people, uh, you know, is there anything else that you think people need to know about while watching this video or coming away from your stuff that we haven't talked about yet? Everything that I've said in my content so far is the most part theory and meant not for others, but for yourself. It's meant for to help you control yourself and the energy that you choose to put out. It's not to say that 
you're solely responsible. You can only control the way you react to something. You can't change the past, only the way you perceive it. So it's helpful to reflect and say, did that really matter? And it's okay to say no, and it's okay to say yes. What's important is that you really thought it through. Absolutely. Great words of wisdom, man. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time here. And uh, last thing, if we want to follow you, uh, you're on what? Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, any other ones? Uh, I'm on threads too, but I don't threads. really know how that works yet. I'm still <laughs> new to the social media thing. I only found out last week how to search sounds on TikTok. Dude, you stay as far away as you can, but I also do think you're dropping some good wisdom here. So keep on dropping them in there. Um, and frog underscore visage at all of them, correct? I think on TikTok, I'm at Rob, but you should be able to find me frog underscore visage. We'll figure it out if there's any deviations. We'll check them out. We'll have all the links in the comments. Um, Rob, thanks so much for uh, talking to us, man. This is really awesome. Like I said, welcome to back anytime. And uh, thanks so much, yeah, dude. I'd love to come back on. Just let me know whenever you want me. Awesome, dude. Thanks a lot.